Apple uh, Music? <laughs> I should, but it gets taken down every time I have. YouTube doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> <I bet. laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> I just ripped off somebody else's song, but I bet they paid for it. So, you know, yeah, they, they probably paid for it. My logo is just a little bit of a different, uh, which is kind of funny, but yeah, we have a good time. All right. Let's see here. Hit record. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to note night in America. Happy March. It is hard to believe it is the end of March, last Monday, March, last Monday, of the first quarter of 2023 all hell's going crazy out there in the markets but we're glad to have you guys here join us tonight got a really really uh powerful hour hour and a half however long we go tonight you will want to definitely grab yourself a pen and paper take some notes uh we, you're in for a real treat tonight that uh, I'm, I'm really excited to have our guest speaker on here but before we get to if this is your first time to join us on note night in america welcome we're honored to have you um, we do these just about every Monday night. I've done these for over roughly about 13 years now, at least 35 to 40 times a year. This is the 12th year in a row that we've actually done it. If you want to catch up on all the replays, you can go and listen to these on anywhere that you get your uh, podcast because we do turn these into the Note Night in America podcast. And you can always watch all the video replays from when we started doing these things 12 plus years ago by going to We Close Notes. Dot TV, which is our YouTube channel. And it's the uh, number one YouTube channel out there for Note Investors, largest. Most episodes, most downloads, most views. So we're, we're really honored about that. And we have another little milestone we're excited about. We've recorded our 750th episode and released it last week of the Note Closer Show. Hard to believe, 750 episodes. And uh, I guess we're coming up on year number seven now. Six, six, six or seven, I don't know. But uh, really excited about that. 751 got recorded today. It'll be live tomorrow as well. But listen to that anywhere on that you listen to podcast. Over 2 million downloads on the show and uh, our speaker tonight was one of the most recent episodes on there that you'll definitely want to listen to it but you guys we are so i'm so jacked up i've been this has been in the works for about a month and you've all probably read a book a little book that came out a few years ago called the rich dad you know rich dad poor dad that was authored by robert kiyosaki and sharon lecter and i've been fortunate enough to meet both those individuals and sharon's a dear friend but most folks don't know there's really a guy behind the guy who did all the work, who's done most of the purchasing, who's just a, a kick-ass, not only investor, capital raiser, but just a genuine great guy out there. And tonight's special guest, he's closed on thousands of real estate transactions across the country. He's got an amazing group of students that are doing amazing things. He comes from the world of Wall Street when he started his first private equity firm back in 1989. I want to say this is the guy that turned from Wall Street to Main Street originally back in the day. He's raised over $600 million in private capital. So we're hitting, you got a little bit of experience here with our a speecher tonight. He is also the first to do single family home portfolios in the United States. He's a friend of mine for over 10 years, which I'm so honored to be able to call this guy. It's always nice when you pick up the phone and call somebody and they answer your first name or they, hey, what's going on, man? How's it going? And so honored to have my friend John Burley join us here tonight on Note Night in America. So John, welcome to have you. I didn't realize this is the first time that we've had you here on Note Night in America. I thought we'd had you on. Oh, wow. It's yeah, hard I think, to believe it. I think you're right. I don't do a, a ton of these, just kind of busy doing what I do. It's excited to be here. Really, really am. And uh, yeah, thank you for the accolades. Yeah, I've known Robert and Sharon. I, I knew Robert actually back when he was named Bob. He, he, <laughs> he was born Robert and he, he was going by Bob. And then a little while before the book became a bestseller, seller, he actually transitioned and went back to his original name, Robert. Um, and yeah, so known them a long time, did a lot of placement for them. Um, it was in an article of Smart Money Magazine 2003. So it's, it's public information for anybody to look. But yeah, the, they're... There was no actual rich dad, rich dad. There was a guy named Mike um, who lived down the street. And, and the poor dad wasn't a poor dad. I mean, his dad had a PhD. His dad ran for lieutenant governor of um, Hawaii. So he wasn't exactly poor. It would be, you know, upper, upper middle class. Um, Mike's dad had a lot of courage from rich dad was actually an analogy of seven different men. I was one of those seven guys and myself and, and a guy named Bill. Uh, who was a Texan originally, actually at Austin, um, when I first met Bill, we did most of the placements for the Kiyosakis because they were running around working. Uh, they were busy, 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 you know, pre-rich dad, pre-game, 
um, working hard in the education industry. And then when those things happened, obviously it, it just went ballistic, phenomenal beyond any reason. And Robert and Kim are people like anybody else. Um, they came home from 250, 75 days a year on the road. And the last thing they wanted to do was more work. Um, so they, they placed their money with a guy like me who, you know, as Robert said several times on the stage, half of what we made was more than all of what he ever made. Cause we're, we're very good at what we do. We do this a long time. Yeah, you've got just a little bit of experience doing yeah. that for a long it, it, time, which is great. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited about the markets we're in. Uh, I'm super yeah. excited about where we're going and some of the opportunities out there. I, I think, though, you know, when I look at um, real estate, and we've talked over the years, Scott, it means I, I foundationally and fundamentally look at real estate different than anybody I've ever spoken to in, in the, um, the realm. Um, I know for a fact that real estate... And this would include notes or any type of real estate. Real estate has absolutely nothing to do with real estate. It never had anything to do with real estate, and it never will. Real estate is entirely and has always been only about money. And if you don't get that real estate's about money, you're always, always going to struggle. Um, and we'll talk about that more tonight. You know, as we go through this, you know, I want to thank you. Um, we're really grateful to be here, Scott. Uh, I, I know this is a lot of work, and you've been doing this, dang. I, I cannot believe 750 episodes. That's just amazing, my friend. Um, you, you're just been a long time. You know, you already covered some of this. I've been doing this for over 40 years. I started actually in 1979. Interest rates went to 19%. So I have a little different perspective when people are freaking out about six and a half, seven percent It's like, uh, from my point of view, it's not there. You know, as far as seeing, you know, everything being so crazy and all that. Yeah. You know, the, um, you know, the main thing I do is, is I just focus on on getting it done and doing that. Put the screen up there for everybody. Um, you know, so we've been doing this over 40 years. Um, a lot of different perspective. This is actually my fifth downturn. This one is, is laying out to be a soft to a medium downturn based on history and what it is. You know, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. Well, people go, why? Because conspiracy theories virtually never happen. Um, I'm also not a big conspiracy theory guy because let's face it, um, right now, we're in some really good opportunities that are out there. We've done thousands and thousands of properties. As you mentioned, I personally raised over 600 million. My students have actually raised over 10 billion. So wow. we're pretty serious about the uh, raising side. And what I do primarily, which is, is I guess why we never barred to get us on a show here with you, is I'm the <laughs> founder and CEO of a private equity company. What I do for a living is real estate, which is what I think your educators should do. Um, you know, our students have done thousands of deals, most, um, and we have thousands of them who become millionaires, Scott. Most of them did it part time. I'm, I'm also a big advocate of. You know, you shouldn't, most people shouldn't just quit their job and become a real estate investor tomorrow morning. It's a big, tough world out here. Uh, most people transition in. I think it's the most effective way for most folks. Um, one thing that then we're going to talk about the money tonight, secret to raising private money is, Scott, we have more Century Club members. It's a term we we coined years ago for somebody who has over 100 properties in portfolio. Um, you know, to give you an idea what that's like, you know, a Century Club member from our realm would, would have made over a million dollars in placement fees. Uh, they would have also received, uh, you know, on the low end, twenty five, thirty thousand a month cash flow. Most of them would be more in the fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month passive income that will occur for decades and decades. Right. And, and that's what we really focus on. Our students have raised over ten billion around the world, and we're actually really proud. We've got the uh, longest running real estate training in the world. Uh, we our thirty first annual Burley Boot Camp is March third through seventh. Um, this is Tricia. Uh, she's an amazing lady. Tricia has uh, been working with us for four years. So just kind of give people an idea of what's possible. This is not a normal result. This is an extraordinary result. She had never done real estate at all. Um, and, and in four years, starting during COVID, um, she raised money and, and bought 205 houses. She had made $1,900,000 uh, in placement fees. And her cash flow is over 84000 a month with $76 million under management. Uh, because this is what we teach you to do, to actually take the shackles off and run a big company. Cool thing about Trisha is her story just keeps on going. I actually talked to her um, end of last week, and she had raised another $10 million and bought another 10 properties, has, an, has money in the bank for another 15. So she just kind of keep on going with making it work, which is cool. Wait, wait, John, you're saying you can still buy real estate now? <laughs> uh, we buy lots of real estate right now, right here today. Right. Um, yeah, we're, you know, there's a combination of ways we do it, but at the end of the day, what I wanted was I, I wanted, I, what I wanted actually is why I always really related to you, Scott. I looked at 
all the great things from notes. Mm -hmm. I looked at all the great things from owner finance, you know, on the sell side. I looked at all the things from being a landlord and they all had some pluses and they all had some negatives. And so it was kind of like, okay, well, why would I settle? For example, on a note, you know, I don't get to raise my income every year, you know, on an, on an, on a note, I don't get to take advantage of the growth, you know, on a rental. Well, I got renters. That's the only problem with rental properties. You got you got tents and toilets. And so it was like going, how do I go about and get all, all of them? Um, and then bring in the Wall Street side. So that's what we did. Um, we do a, a, a placement fee of $10,000 for property with a capital investor on every deal we do. Um, we uh, Because we're using capital investors who have A credit, platinum credit, which is what we teach you to do, you know, we don't have to run around and pay for DSCR loans. We don't have to pay for hard money loans. We don't have to pay for expensive money, which is not what really any long-term real business does. Long-term real businesses get the cost of money is one of the biggest costs of the business. It needs to be handled properly right away. And that's what we do. And so we're just out there buying and selling, doing what we do um, and teaching that model uh, to other people. You know, Tricia, she's phenomenal. And, and she'll be at our event. Um, we have an event coming up April 15th to 17th, April 21st to 23rd here in Phoenix, Arizona. I don't like to show pictures of checks. I don't like to show pictures of mythology of people from, you know, like a billion years ago who supposedly <laughs> did this. The pictures I'm showing you today, these are all people who are going to be at the April event. So these are real people who have really done it, who are doing it right now, who are there to help answer lots and lots and lots of questions. Our events are unique. As you know, I don't have outside guest speakers in. So it's not, you know, somebody's telling you the greatest thing since sliced bread every five minutes. It's just tons and tons and tons of content. You know, I think for um, everybody there, and we were just hitting on is like, you know, why did we become real estate investors? You know, and people go like, well, to make money and, you know, to to get out of my job and, you know, financial security. And they're all really good answers. But I think the one thing where a lot of investors forget, we get so busy flipping, whether it's flipping notes or flipping real estate or flipping land or whatever we're doing, is that we forget that's not why we became real estate investors. I know why you did, the same reason I did. You wanted to be financially free. And, and, and financial freedom, and the Rich, the Rich Dad book, it was great from my point of view because it made the, made the term famous, cash flow. You know, in the cash flow game, which I'm one of the creators of the game, is freedom is cash flow. Freedom is having money coming in every single month. In the old days, it really was mailbox money. People really mailed checks in in the old days. <laughs> um, I, we still have people mail them in. I still have, we still have about uh, 20 residents who literally every month drop off their, um, their money orders, cashiers, check or cash through our slot in the office every single month. People are like, why do you let them do that? Well, they've been paying for 20, 25 years. I'm not going to tell them they can't anymore. Uh, they're just, you know, they've been around a long time. They're old school. That's how they pay. Um, they've never entered this quote unquote new modern world. Um, but we became real estate investors for freedom. And, and really, that'd be the one thing I'd, I'd encourage everybody tonight to do is really resonate with is, is what you're doing now getting you the freedom you want? Is what you're doing now going to get you out of working? Or have you just done what most people in real estate did? You had this dream, you had this vision of being free, and then you ended up getting a new job called being a real estate investor. And you spend all your day flipping notes. You spend all your day flipping land. You spend all your day flipping real estate. And all you did is you changed your old job for a new job. And then unfortunately, many people, I and mean, Scott, you're a veteran, you've been around, but there's a lot of the younger people out there in the business, not age, but years in the business, who kind of forgot that there was real risk in real estate investing. You know, yeah. and a lot of the seminars that I've been doing, you know, I call it seminar land, is, you know, it's like at the seminar, everything works. And it's all too good to be true. And then you go out the door to the real world and suddenly it doesn't all work like it said. Because some of our land in the last few years, especially all the ones that are doing the short term and the quick cash and the flips, they sort of pretended like market risk didn't exist. Like what happens yeah. when the real estate doesn't go up every week, which is not normal. Yeah. And so they forgot about market risk, which you cannot control. And then they they uh, forgot about interest rate risk. Like, you know, all these models were all based on the houses would always always go up in value and the interest rates would always be low. Well, if you're doing those models, you're in trouble. Yep. And then the other thing they, they forgot about was economic risk. And for me, coming from Wall Street, it's like, look, those are huge. You can't control them. And so any model that you have that's going to be sustainable for the long term, which is the only time it counts, everybody should be able to make money when it goes up. Uh, the key is, can you make money when it goes down and when it goes sideways? And the better your model is, the more you make when it goes down. 
including the assets that you already own. It's not just about buying cheap. It's about buying assets that you position to where they're continually cash flowing and giving you the income stream. And that's what we focus on is the freedom side. You know, when we look at the model, this is essentially what I do. I provide home ownership for the resident. 35% of Americans cannot own their own home under current legislation, banking, and government rules. It's intentional and deliberate. They give lip service to everybody owning a home, but they don't change the rules. Actually, they pass things like Dodd-Frank, which make it even more difficult for people to own a home. Um, and so what we do is we provide home ownership. Myself, my, my family, what we've done, we've delivered a deed, Scott, to over 2,200 families. That means they moved in, they made payments for years and years and years, and then paid the home off in full. Of those 2,200 families who own a home directly from me, I don't think 50 of them would have done it in the current system that's out there. Right. Uh, we have to set them up to win. So, for example, you know, like what happens when there's a big crash? You know, like you mean eight to 10, which our company thrived through, not survived, thrived. 91% of my residents in eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, the five worst years there were to be real estate investors um, in our lifetimes. During those, those five years, 91% of my residents did nothing but stay and pay which is a 9% fallout over five years is incredibly small in any model. Yep. And the reason is, is, you know, boy, with all that finance that was going on, kind of similar to the financing uh, way back in 2002, uh, 2022 rather, in 2021, it's like most of my residents were about 40 FICO points away from a $500,000 loan. And I helped them own a $200,000 home that they could pay for. So in other words, the idea wasn't we're going to get you your epic endgame dream home. We're going to get you the family home that you can afford to pay in good times or bad because bad times are always around the corner, especially when you're in good times. We bring in a capital investor. Capital investor, they put up all the money, they sign for loans, and they pay the 10000 placement fee up front. Exactly what the Kiyosakis did with us. Exactly what so many investors who have done with us. You know, when we started out, it was friends and family which is where most of you guys listening right now would start with your sphere of influence. We have very specific scripts that we follow. There's a presentation. It's all, you know, based on what we've been doing since, you know, 40 years now. And we just show you exactly how we do it, how the people who are Century Club members do it. And the idea being, instead of having to run around, you know, with not a lot of tools, you know, the normal real estate investor is like, wow, uh, I'm going to do quick cash deals with, with, you know, hard money lenders, which is, you know, basically pawn shop money. Um, or I'm going to be doing, you know, DSCR loans, which suddenly with the interest rates going up, that makes so many deals not work. Um, or I'm going to run around doing the tried and true, no money down, no credit required loans, you know, real estate acquisitions or owner financing at zero to two percent. These are all great things and we teach and we do these things. But you can't count on building a portfolio in a lot of markets. I mean, I know some I've seen some some podcasts lately and I know you have you know, people like there's a student of foreclosures coming and it's like really because the no. federal data says that we're actually at the lowest levels of foreclosure in 40 years yep the data doesn't matter right. and you you buy notes you know we are not sitting on exorbitant extraordinary defaults first of all most people i mean unless you bought in you know january of 22 or december of 21 you're sitting on equity so, I mean, most of the deals that we would have looked at 15 years ago that were, you know, a couple months behind on payments, man, they were just happy to get a few thousand, ten thousand dollars moving, walking money. Today, it's like, I got 150 in equity. I want some of that money. Um, you've also got a lot of these with equity. They aren't in trouble. They want to move. They can't sell. They can't get their price. But to move, they want you to get a new loan or actually assume their loan, which is, again, where bringing the capital investor is. Bringing somebody in besides you who can sign for loans, new loans or existing loans. We're doing a lot of plays right now at two and a half to three and a half percent loans where we're signing for, assuming not subject to, and people, well, why not sub two? Because they won't do it. Mm -hmm. They're not like behind the eight ball. They're not sitting there with no equity and having the ability to bring myself or another capital investor in to sign for the loan gives me opportunities that almost no other real estate investors have. And so we're buying those even off MLS, literally off the MLS with realtors going, okay, because we're now doing it how they want to do it, how it needs to be done if we're working with them. And so they take care of everything. We make 10,000 up front. And then in essence, what you guys are, you're the deals manager and you make half the money. You share in the profits and the losses 50-50. We've been doing this since 1989. We've never had a losing year. And, and the reason is, is people are like, wow, you know, John Burley, you do all this creative real estate and all this finance stuff, you know, Mr. Creative, all this stuff. And it's like, actually, no. See, from my background out of Wall Street, 
from private equity firms that worked for profit, not for fees, for profit, meaning we only get paid if we make money. I know that as the CEO and founder of my private equity company, my sole job, my purpose is to reduce and mitigate risk. And by reducing and mitigate risk, I raise my returns for the long term. Because the greatest way to become very, very wealthy is never lose a bunch of money. And it's kind of like the whole podcast world forgot about this. They forgot about how real families who got really wealthy actually got wealthy, not doing all sorts of the crazy stuff that you see out there. You know, as we move into 23, it's like we're in a new year. And here's what I encourage everybody who's watching right now is like, look, it's a new year. It's a new you start. Leverage it. Money's the most important skill set that you need to have. You need to learn to raise money. Otherwise, you can't, really, you can't grow a portfolio to any substantial long-term holding position to cash flow if you don't have the money. You know, and I think right now, I remember a couple of years ago, and you remember this guy, everybody's like, oh, the prices are too high, the prices are too high, the prices are too high, the prices are too high. And we were always like, it's not the price, it's the return. Now everybody's screaming, the interest rates are too high, the interest rates are too high, the interest rates are too high. It's not the interest rate, it's the return. It was never the price, it was never the interest rate, it's always been the return. And any great professional investor can go into any market and make great returns. It's just a matter of how hard you're going to work. Different markets, we have to work harder. Different markets, we work less. And the key is to not be doing it. Everybody's doing it the exact time everybody's doing it. So it's like, man, if you were flipping in 20 or 21, you probably struggled. Well, yeah, because everybody and his brother and sister had been on a podcast, a YouTube video, or seen an infomercial and gone to a free preview. You had all these people trying to do the exact same thing in the exact yeah. same place at the exact same time. Wisdom would tell you to get the hell out of that portion of the game and do something else. We yeah. we do the flips when everybody's not, not when they are. Agreed, Scott? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's, it's somebody, I think somebody famous also said when people are running one all runway, run the opposite way, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And then you get back to the greatest contrarian in, in modern history over the last couple thousand years. Um is literally when people are greedy, be fearful. Yep. And when people are fearful, be greedy. And that's Warren Buffett, you yep. know, and, and all these guys, oh, where your money should be placed. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Warren Buffett came into this downturn with $180 billion in cash. Um, and three times in my life, I've heard people talk like Warren Buffett didn't know what he was doing. And then shortly after the market, after that, the markets crashed and they went bankrupt. And suddenly Warren knew what he was doing again. Let me help out. Warren knows what he's doing. He's right now taking positions in buying control and companies because now's when you buy. When everybody is fearful, that's when you get greedy. Not in the bad word of the greed, not like on a movie, but intelligently, rationally, strategically, we place ourselves and we acquire assets when the markets are off, not when they're up. You know, we're doing a lot of creative financing. In, in April, we will spend on the 21st, 23rd, literally the entire three days is just about the real estate, how we're finding deals in this market how we are doing the subject twos, how we're doing the owner financing, why assumptions are so critical. I mean, so so for those of you that aren't familiar with it, subject two is the idea we're going to take control of the existing loan subject two. And the traditional way, the way Seminar Land teaches it, you take control of subject two, the loan stays in their name, so they're fully responsible. The ethical companies teach you that you need to honor your word, have contracts that bind you, and you really make the payments. And I see a bunch of guys like, ah, if it doesn't work, just don't pay payments, give them back the house. Like, that's okay. And, and anybody with any integrity ethics knows that's not okay, even a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge amount of people who right now, they're not hurting. This is not 2008 or 10. There's not blood on the streets. People aren't underwater. That's not where we are. There's no tsunami of foreclosures coming. None of that's happening. If you can assume, assume means like, hey, that great loan that's got 28 years left is at 2.5%. If you assume the loan, which means you have to fully qualify, if you'll assume for that, that loan, They'll then take some walking away money. Now it's going to be, you know, it's not two grand anymore. It's 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars, depending whether the numbers work or not. But it's better than an owner finance deal with 20% down at six and a half percent. So we're doing a lot of these, but you have to bring in a real financial statement with real income streams, with real credit history. And this is what we're saying is if you don't have it, that's cool. Just understand you need to get it before you go in the game. Because most of the good deals out there right now with the existing financing are not sub twos if you're in any mainstream major market. Yeah, if you're out in Timbuktu, the Deep South, the Midwest, in these in these little teeny areas that are sub hundred thousand dollar houses, 
they they don't have a bunch of equity because the reason those houses are under 100 grand is because they never go up and they're never going to go up. We're talking where most of us are, real markets around the country. We're having to do the assumptions. We also do the mirror wraps, lease options, all the different stuff. And, and where we're getting our spreads today, it's a combination. We've got prices are down. We've got moderate interest rate or taking advantage of low interest rate. And then, of course, the income streams are way, way up and continue to go up. You know, the markets are going to continue to shift. And the main thing is if we get on the money, which we're going to focus tonight, we can take off the shackles. We can stop playing small ball. So many of you right now, you know, you had money, you placed it, and you've done four deals, five deals, six deals, eight deals. You finally really figured out what a great deal is, exactly how to make it money, how to monetize it. You've got the skill sets, but now you can't borrow anymore. So you're out there looking for the needle in the haystack. You are looking for that sub two, that owner finance. And those deals are there. They're great. They're just hard to find. And that's just the truth. We're saying is let's look at every deal out there and let's have money to do them. And that's really the key where I think most people miss. Hey, the quick legal disclaimer, I'm not an attorney. I'm not an accountant or tax preparer. I'm not a financial planner or investment advisor. I'm not giving investment advice. I'm not offering legal advice. I'm not offering tax advice. I'm only sharing my opinion as always is recommended. Anyone considering taking action to seek appropriate advice and counsel. There, that should take care of our attorneys. <laughs> I, think you, I think you got them all checked off the box there, John. <laughs> I, we tried to. We tried to. Uh, so here's what we do. Every single property I do, I want $10,000 up front. Part of our uh, private equity models, we really learned to monetize. See, we were the first company to go out big and do single family por portfolio with raises. We were literally, you know, 89, 90, 91, developing, creating, and perfecting this model. Most of the Wall Street companies didn't come in 20 years later. Five of the biggest firms actually paid me rather large consulting fees to look at their models, tell them their models wouldn't work. And then I loved it. Three of them rehired me again five years later after their models had failed, exactly like I said, and paid me almost double the consulting fee. I love Wall Street. <laughs> um, because you got to have a model. So we get 10000 up front on every property. That's your placement fee every time you work with the capital investor. The new resident, we get in our market eight to ten thousand dollars up front. They, we're, we're doing a form of owner financing, but with owner financing, they have to have some skin in the game. And it's up to us to have the documents and the model and the going through the underwriting process, the vetting process to make sure they can win. The reason we have such a low turn and such a high percentage of our residents win and own the home is because we set the model up for them too. I always tell people like, look, if you're looking for one of these, you know, hey, it's great. I give them a one or two year lease option. Almost nobody does it. Um, it's great. I'm basically stealing from people. I'm not your guy. I want the resident to win first and foremost. That That is the basis of the model. The client has to win. And so we set up for the resident to win. If the resident wins, we all win. The, number three right now, it's pretty easy. We're buying with built-in value, with equity. We're buying for below market across the board. Um, we're getting capital growth and appreciation. I like to invest in markets that have a history of growing. We've invested in here in the Arizona market quite a bit. We've invested in 11 other states and also large portfolios in two other countries. But I always tried to position myself where over time I would have a chance of getting that good growth capture because that's a lot of what we call whipped cream on top of the ice cream there. Pr principal reduction. I was blessed when I was a uh, in, in the equity markets, Wall Street markets. Um, I had hundreds and hundreds of clients that I'd gone out and, and created as my clients. They were deca millionaires with our minimum standard back in the 80s, um, up to a quarter billion, half a billion. And then as I continued on doing my private placements, I, I've worked with almost a thousand deca millionaires to billionaires. Um, and I got to really see how they do their numbers. And let me help you guys out. If you think, if you don't understand what the podcast stuff and how it works, good. Because what they're teaching is not what people with real money do. Mm -hmm. um, so real businesses, real companies don't run around refinancing their assets every couple of years, pulling the cash out to not pay income taxes. Not how the game works. Never was, never will be. Real companies, when you look at people who are who retire wealthy, it was a combination of they bought the assets, the assets went up in value over time, and they paid the debt down. You know, the, the banks want you to refinance within seven years because the first seven years on a 30-year loan, regardless of interest rate, you only pay off 3% of the loan. When you start getting 12, 15, 18, 20 years, now the, the odds flip into your favor. And so we pay off our loans. We buy them. We hold them for the long, long, long term because I come from Wall Street. See, when I need more money, I'm not going to put it jeopardy and at risk my existing assets that produce. I'm not going to take my golden goose and put an ax on her neck and kill it 
by refinancing, take the capital out. What if I need more money and what we're going to teach you to do, you raise more money, but you don't endanger your existing assets. I understand that's what everybody teaches on podcasts, but guys, that is not the truth. That is not how people who are decamillionaires to billionaires really did it. There was a leverage in the startup. They would bring in new capital, but they would not continually take the great assets and destroy them. Um, you know, literally out of almost a thousand people, two went bankrupt. Two rich people don't go bankrupt. That's why they're rich. I understand if you go bankrupt, you should reframe it and make it into a learning lesson and a good thing. That's what I would do too if I went bankrupt, but I never went bankrupt and I have no intention of ever positioning myself to where I would. And it's not about being lucky or anything of that. It's understanding how to reduce and mitigate risk, knowing what risk is and managing it properly. And so the big part is that, you know, debt is a, is a double-edged sword. And we're seeing a lot of people struggle with it right now because they listen to people who were short-term players who hadn't been around, who didn't really understand what the big boy game and girl was. And I come from that big game and, and let me help out. None of those people come from YouTube videos and podcasts, not what they do for a living. They do for a living if they run a real investment company or a real business that produces a lot of capital. And so that's what we're going to teach. Everything we teach is business-based reality, not just pie in the sky. Um, tax benefits, 179 on, and it's it's going out in two years, but right now it's section 179. Every single new property acquisition we do, we can take an 8 to 12%. Um, right there in your backyard uh, in Austin, Texas, we have a young lady who took out over a million dollars in deductions to offset ordinary income in the first year because she was a professional investor. 199A, 20% of your income is exempt if it's a qualifying trader business. Um, direct real estate participation is a qualifying trader business. And, and then we increase the income every year. It's one of the things I loved about having the investment properties versus just the notes is every year I can bring my stream up. So I kind of looked at Scott, everything that was out there that was great in notes, that was great in flips, that was great in rentals. And I wanted all the good and I wanted to reduce and mitigate virtually all the bad. So that's how we came up with the Burley model and how we monetize. And we want it on every property we do always. And we've done this thousands and thousands of times. Yeah, you know, so kind of like you guys out there right now, I'd like you just kind of to get your energy up and I'd like you to just repeat after me. Um, I, come on, I, I will have, have 10, more 10 more cash flow properties, properties in portfolio, portfolio in 2023. In 2023. You come out and join us in April 15th to 17th and the 21st, 23rd in Phoenix, Arizona. I absolutely guarantee you that that's the path we're going to put you on. We're going to show you exactly how to position yourself to raise the money to buy these properties and keep it for the long term. And you need money and credit to really be big in this business, but it doesn't need to be yours. It doesn't need to be yours. Um, and, and, and real estate education is great, but there's always been a, a missing link. If you've gotten little or no results so far, it's not your fault. Yeah. So the thing is, there's three great keys to a business model. Number one is a great idea. And let's face it, McDonald's proved the idea doesn't need to be that great because the food sucks. <laughs> but the business model, which is mainly a real estate with cash flow from burgers, is a good model. Second thing is, you know, real businesses raise their money first. Then they go into business. They don't go into business and then try and get money. It's not how it works in the real world. Not with people who are actually successful. And then you have a system to monetize, which is why we have the 10,000 placement fee up front. So we actually get paid right away for our work, just like every normal business. And then we go ahead and get our monthly income streams to cash flow. You know, and those are the first three keys to a business model. And that's what, if you were to go to any MBA program, any two-year MBA program at any college in America, this would be the essence of the two years. Great idea, raise money, monetize. And then the fourth step is to run it like a real business. And, and so here's the problem. I went to my first seminar back in the late 70s. There was only a couple of guys that were out doing them. The internet hadn't been invented by Al Gore yet. And mm -hmm. so we were just out here, you know, just kind of in the dark. There were three books on creative real estate that, that you could get. And that was it. Um, and so I went through them and I got started. And it was like, okay, real estate's a great idea. And I, I believed it. I believe real estate was great. Um, a, it is it's not how most people became millionaires. Most people actually became millionaires off of a business. And then within the business and from the profits in the business, they bought real estate. So the real estate asset class is prevalent in almost all wealthy families. It wasn't necessarily the generator because most of them became real estate wealthy. Most of them became millionaires. They weren't but millionaires because they bought a bunch of rental properties and waited for the go up. They had a business and then they invested in real estate as well.
So the first thing we got to understand is real estate investing is a traditionally taught. It's a totally flawed business model. Totally flawed. It like violates every rule for being a successful business. You know, and when I went to my first seminar, I was like, hey, invest in real estate is a great idea. And, and straight up, you know, I always like this term, you know, Scott, I drank the Kool-Aid. I mean, I drank it. I know you, when you got started in real estate, you drank the Kool-Aid too, buddy. Yes, sir. Uh, and pretty much everybody listening right now is not in their head because, yeah, we all drank the Kool-Aid. The problem is I went to regular real estate seminars and I didn't realize I was drinking green Kool-Aid. And the green Kool-Aid, it doesn't taste good. It sucks. Everybody knows the red Kool-Aid's better. I drank the green Kool-Aid because here's where real estate really gets off, off whack. Coming from the Wall Street side, when I told them and I told my clients what I had been taught at real estate seminars, they just all laughed. And these weren't like, Broke people who didn't think money could do. They had taken extraordinary risks, leveraged on all kinds of amazing things. But like going, why would you try and do that? It makes no sense. Because my first seminars, and, and this is what's sad, guys, is like literally in in uh, watching a couple of podcasts this year. Literally in 2023, I'm not kidding you. It's verbatim, almost word for word, what I was first taught in '79. Almost word for word, the assignment of contract. This is not new. I mean, you'd think they would have evolved at some point. The, the buying for no money down, low down, owner financing, sub two. I mean, this is all so old and so tired. Every other person in the financial in a financial industry, every other trade, from, from mutual funds to commodities and everything in between, we all know you raise money first, then you invest. And this is where I struggled with real estate. And in my first nine years as an investor, part-time investor, I did a handful of deals. Two of them, I got lucky and made money. The other three, I actually bought well and made money. I'm willing to acknowledge when I'm just lucky so that I don't try and repeat it. Real estate investors were taught, hey, kid, go out and make a bunch of offers, tie up a good deal, and the money will just show up. And I'm going to tell you, that's not how it works at all. I myself lost lots of deals where I had put them together, but I didn't have the money. The smart and easy way, and what real people do is you get the money first, then you do the deals. You know, the 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 next thing is that real estate investors don't get paid up front. Our thing is like, look, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tie a property up, and then we're going to try and flip it or assign it or rehab it, whatever we're doing. But we're looking like, starting from scratch, you're looking like 90 days to nine months before you get a check. That's too long. Ours is like, literally, you, you come work with us. You can literally make a phone call, set up an appointment, run the appointment, have someone say yes, they they uh, put the money in the account, there's I's we dot, and T's we cross, and literally you get paid up front before you even do it because everybody else in the, in the whole money industry gets paid first, not last. And so what we're just taught is just totally flawed. We violate how a business works. And I drank this Kool-Aid and I did it. And then 89, I woke up and it's like, this is ridiculous. Not how I run my real business. It's not how all these hundreds and hundreds of clients who are wealthy run their business. Nobody I knew who was rich did this model and sustained it. Uh, and, and then many of them over leveraged. And then when the interest rates went up, their, their market, they just collapsed. And so it's like, not going to do it. We're going to run it like a little business. And that's the last step we've run it. Hey, if you guys want to know, we've got a uh, an offer tonight. You can go to johnbrilly.com uh, slash Scott Carson. If you're anxious and you want to check it out, we're going to keep going and keep teaching here and going over more stuff. You know, Dave Lowe, and he's up in uh, Canada. He's worked with me for over uh, over 20 years. Um, he, he scheduled a bit spring training event. He's got 100 properties in Canada, 100 properties in um, America and Phoenix area. He's actually a, a dual citizen and a dual Century Club member. And what he does is he specializes with foreign national, taking Canadian investors and placing their money down here. And he does all the work, runs it on the Burley model. Very, very successful guy. Um, so here's a big treat. Money is the key to real estate investing. It's more important than anything else. And the real secret to raising private money uh, and, and that's exactly what the people who make over a million dollars a year do that almost no one else does You see everybody else is focusing on the deal and the rate of return and the property and all this logical stuff rather than focusing on what the investor really wants. See, we've got to meet our investors' emotional and psychological needs, even if they don't know what they do and if they don't know what they are and 9% of them don't. So let me help out. Think about people who have money. So most of them, they're older. They're 50, 60, 70 plus years old. It, it takes a while to build it up. And it also takes a while to get the wisdom to not spend it on stuff you don't need. I mean, we all go through that process. Some of us learn the lessons by 20. Some of us learn the lesson by 50. Some people never learn them. But there are models that people who are wealthy do. And it's not 
you know, driving a Lamborghini when you have no money. It's not living in a big house that you rent that you can't afford. Those aren't the wealth models. Uh, they look cool on podcasts, but they don't actually make you rich. Um, most of our investors and most of my, they place is in cash. So for example, right now today, there is over 3 trillion, not billion, $3 trillion in pension plans in cash, IRAs, 401ks, defined benefit, defined corporation, uh, compensation, simple plans, all the different plans that are out there, Keo money purchase, 3 trillion in cash. Why? Because people are scared. You gotta understand if you had money, and you're a little bit older, in 87, you took a big whack on a stock market crash. And then in 10, by 10, you literally lost a third of everything you own. 90 to 95% of all our capital investors and all our students' capital investors, the money's non-deployed, guys. They're not at real estate seminars. They're not on podcasts. They're not at RIAs. They work very, very hard, 40, 50, 60, 80 hours a week, running their business, being a high-end employee. They work very hard at a very good rate. And they have a lot of money and they've moved it. It may still be in a brokerage account, but it's moved from being in, you know, the S&P 500 or Apple stock or, you know, direct whatever it was. And it's just sitting in cash because they're far more worried about losing than they are about winning. And it's a psychological thing because it's like, this is what I know. If your money's been parked for years, the issue isn't rate of return. If the issue was rate of return, we'd be talking about, it'd be like four, 2004 or five or six, Scott, where it's like going, yeah, you're going to take the money out of your cruddy note. You're going to take the money out of your fourplex in Albuquerque that has a terrible property manager. You're going to get rid of that dog and mute fund. You're going to tr trade your assets that aren't doing as well for what you perceive to be my better assets. Since 10, over 90% of all the capital my company has raised came from cash. With my students, it's over 90% came from cash. We're moving money that is locked up in fear from loss. And you got to understand when you're new and you don't have money, it's like, yeah, you want to make 25 to 100%. You don't care about the risk. You don't have anything to lose. When you're 50, 60, 70 years old, and you've worked very, very hard for decades and decades and decades to amass you know, half a million, million, five million, 10 million, 50 million, 100 million in that's now mainly in cash. You're worried about losing, not about winning. And so we have to do a very specific conversation that meets their needs. It's not about our needs. So we need to stop showing off and doing a real estate seminar when we're trying to raise money. We need to actually talk to where they're going on. And, and they've got two brains. you got your conscious and you got your, your subconscious. You know, And I know that you know, in a selling situation, it's very important that I meet people's needs. You know, and Zig said it best. Um, Zig was a Texan up a little bit north of you guys there in Dallas. I, Zig was a good friend of mine. Um, and there was so many Zigisms out there, but my favorite was help enough people get what they want and you'll get everything you want, you know, and mm -hmm. remember that. Um, and to me in the speaking industry, Zig was a shining light. He was a beacon. He was what everybody should be, which isn't always the case. Zig was, he was a good friend of mine over the decades. I've started as a student and 30 years later, we were very good friends before he passed away. Zig was the exact same man off the stage as he was on the stage. He was the same guy. He was a great guy, you know, and, and such a rare in the industry. And back then they were road warriors, you know, married forever to his wife, madly in love with her. He was one of my role models on, on what a husband should be and a wife's relationship should be. You know, he's a great dad. Um, he just, you know, really did all the things you wanted and made a lot of money and helped a lot of uh, people. And so when we talk about people's emotional psychological needs, what we're going to do is we're going to do talking points. I'm going to understand that there's two brains. So Scott, no matter how much you like or trust me and know me, in a sales situation, 0.1 to 99.99% of your conscious mind thinks I'm lying to take your money. Would you say that's a fair? <laughs> that's very fair. Yeah, I very don't know why salespeople are in denial of this. But more importantly, especially as we get into higher numbers like we're talking about now, 0.1 to 99.99% of your subconscious mind also thinks I'm lying to take your money. So people go, well, John, what do you do? Well, the first thing is, don't use traditional sales tools. So I understand these days, everybody's got a PowerPoint presentation, but you understand those sales presentation are not what the elite use. They are not what the million dollar a year earning salespeople use at all, like ever. 
The company presentation is a mediocre presentation designed for mediocre representatives to get mediocre results because they don't have the courage and they're unwilling to do what it takes to make the large money. There's a reason why if you've ever worked in commission salespeople, sales, the same people are on top of the board month after month after month after month after month for decades. There's no luck or accident involved. They're far better at what they do. So I know that if I say it, it, it could be construed as a lie to take your money. And this, this one is always as weird, but it's how we work as human beings. I'm no different than anybody else. If I say it, it's true. Even if it's not, doesn't matter. So what we do is rather than go in and do a dog and pony real estate show, when the main concern is taking money that's not placed and placing it, that's almost all of our conversations. So it doesn't matter how much logic we have, how many spreadsheets, how much content, how much information, how much social proof, none of that matters because they don't even understand that they're stuck. Most of them is like going, God, the money's been there since 10. Has it been that long? Yes. I don't say that out loud. <laughs> so here's what I do. You know, I, I do my elevator talking. You'll each develop your own when you when you come to April event and in the product, we actually help you design your own elevator talk. So what we do is, Scott, we acquire properties for the long term and, and in regular neighborhoods for regular people and provide home ownership. And then I transition. That's it. That was my real estate conversation. It, it's Scott, when I work with uh, successful business owners such as yourself, they tell me it's really important Actually, they tell me it's paramount. Everybody say the word paramount really quick for me. Humor me. Come on. Paramount. Paramount. Most people don't even know exactly what paramount definition is, but we all know paramount is more important than important. The main thing paramount does is it gets attention right away. It just It's an attention grabber. So I, when I talk with successful business owners such as yourself, Scott, they tell me it's really important. It's paramount that their money is safe at all times. Would you agree safety is important? Everybody who has, has money is going to say yes. I've never had anybody who had money say, no, safety doesn't matter. And so then we write safety. And we don't use a PowerPoint presentation. We write safety down on a piece of paper. Double, you know, we use the our old friend, the yellow pad. Yes. We double space it because most of our capital investors are older and older people need readers. And everybody said women are vain. My experience has been when it comes to readers, men are far more, more vain than women. And if he can't read it, the answer is always no. Right. So right and big, I write out safety. We then have a series of questions that we teach you. For example, geez, guys, there ever been a time when your money didn't feel safe? Well, yeah. Like right now, John, we just lost 20% of the stock market. Uh, we took a bloodbath in 12. Um, you know, and so we get them to talk about why and when their money wasn't safe. We have a series of questions that we teach you. You know, we then do the same thing for security. Um, safety and security are different words, different definitions of different people. Most people don't even know what their own word is. Statistically, for about 75% of the people who have money, their most important keyword on a subconscious level is safety. For 25%, it's security. I don't know which they are, but I so I do both and I do them well. I do know that if I hit safety and security, it literally is 90% of the placement. It has nothing to do with rate of return. Because the money's currently making nothing. It's not rate of return. We need to understand that what we think things are is not what they are to people who are wealthy. And you need to understand how they feel and how they think and what their problems are. Right? Going, well, if I had a million dollars, everything would be great. Well, if you had a million dollars that was sitting in the bank earning nothing, you wouldn't be great. You'd be bothered by that. And every night, be restless in your sleep. You need to put your feet in other people's shoes, not just your own. This is, Zig was right. This isn't about meeting your needs. It's about meeting other people's needs. So we go through and we really hit safety or security. For most people, if we're a match, meaning they have money and this is something that we, we'd like to work with them and they'd like to work with us. If we can hit safety or security, we're home. And we have a 90% chance of placement. You know, I think in, in a post-Bernie Madoff world, safety is paramount. It really is. People who have money are far more worried about losing than making a billion percent rate of return. Uh, this is Eric in Mockinhot in Pittsburgh. You guys come out in April and work with us. You'll meet Eric. Uh, again, these are all real breathing people. He's got over 100, 100 uh, single family home portfolio. He also owns office buildings, a warehouse, a post office. The US government is the worst hand he has. They're normally 60 to 90 months late on the rent, but they 300% of market value. So what the heck? Uh, he does mini storage. Uh, he's got land and he builds apartments. He's a licensed contractor. He's been doing this for a long time and he's there to help you guys out. Because one of the things we do at our events is 
I think it's really important that if this really works what we say, that I should have real life people there who are highly successful. And I'll have a half dozen Century Club members who are there. Even uh, each weekend, we do a uh, expert panel where they come up and you can ask them any question you want. But several years ago, I had an attorney at one, Scott. She's just like, okay, that's it. Um, she'd been a Oh, a, a bit of a sweetheart slash challenge during the event. Very opinionated <laughs> and very, very wealthy. And she's bless like, her heart. Bless, bless her heart. Yeah, and she'd say down <laughs> under God bless. And uh, she's like, okay, John, there's no way you could have possibly paid that many people to to lie that well for this long. This is real. And I'm like, well, thank you. Appreciate that. We all are pretty much knew that, but. It's just we can bring in the real deals. We also, during the weekend events, we schedule you guys an opportunity where if you want, you can actually register and sit down with the Century Club member for 15, 20 minutes, either before or after hours, and have them just personally work with you and help you out, whatever you got going on, whatever you need help with. If you'd expert, if you'd benefit from having a deck of millionaires got over 100 properties, walk you through and give you solutions that's available. Because I obviously, during the event, I can't speak to every single person throughout the, throughout the, the weekend. Um, next thing is people want long-term. See, what a lot of people don't understand is that most of my capital investors wanted exactly what you want, Scott, and everybody listening right now. We all wanted to have the choice to be able to retire better and sooner than our current plan. So better and sooner. So most of my capital investors, they're no different th than me. It's like, yeah, you know, instead of 65, I'd like to be able to retire at 55 or 60. Um, you know, instead of having 10,000 a month, I'd like 20,000 a month. You know, I had one capital investor just a little while ago. He goes, you know, John, here's what you did for us, man. You took us from a condo on an island in the Caribbean, two blocks from the beach to a villa on the beach. That's what you did for us. Um, because we help capital investors get what they want. And, you know, in today's volatile markets, man, and they're volatile. And the volatility right now is great. Boy, you, you guys want to talk about good news for us, SVB. How much better could it be? They're all yeah. afraid of the stock market. They're afraid to rest to invest in virtually every asset class being sold by Wall Street. And heck, now they're afraid to put the money in the bank, too. Yes. We are looking better. You, We are looking better and better right now, my friends. It's like we just lost another 20 pounds. We're looking good. And, 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 you know, today's volatile markets, man, give them what they want. Safety and security. Safety and security is a combination conversation people have money. And then we're looking long term. See, because what most people want to do with their money is they want to make a good decision for the long term and not do it all the time. Some of you are running around trying to get people to do flips with you. We'll teach you a better vocabulary in April. But look, if you're trying to get flip money, stop calling it flips. Think about the psychology. Most people are afraid to flip an egg because it will break. And you want them to flip their entire fortune that it took them 20, 30, 40 years to put together. Better words, guys. You're talking to the subconscious man mind, which in most cases is completely afraid of losing. We are not talking to the 5% who is out there taking risks and doing the business like we do. That's not our client. Our client is the ones that need the help, not the ones who are already doing it. And then the, the buzzword, and, and God bless them, Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, they just made this a household word. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. If you've got money, the game is entirely about cash flow. It is not about quick cash. They do not want in and out. They want the money placed for the long, long term. Just like myself, I figured out in the late 80s, man, quick cash is just another freaking job. Whether I, whether I was doing it with businesses, cars, notes, debt instruments, or doing it with, with uh, traditional securities or real estate, it's just a job. And it was a job that could pay more, but worked more. But that job also came with huge risk. The main ones being market risk, interest rate risk, and, and economic risk, which those are all completely vulnerable to. And I don't like being in a vulnerable position. So we don't do those transactions because they're just too risky in the long term. And this happens every 12 to 14 years. We get a downturn when those niches are very difficult to make work. Uh, Josh out of Pittsburgh, he'd done over uh, 200 uh, flips. Uh, and he was a traditional old school rehabber. He, he actually always jokes that, you know, we have a rehab program for rehabbers. Because <laughs> what Josh does now, he's over 150 properties. He does cash flow. He, um, he likes to network and, and meet people. So he started out uh, doing a lot of networking and going to charity events. And actually, most of his capital investors today actually play for the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Penguins, including some of the biggest names. 
And so he just then, you know, takes care of them. Boom, boom, boom. Cause usually they blow their rookie money, but when they sign that second contract it's like, yeah, we ain't blowing the money again. This may be the last good deal I ever see. And so they give it to a guy like Josh who places it for him and makes him just great long-term cash flow. He also, almost all of his capital investors um, don't use financing. They just buy cash. We have capital investors who just a normal thing. They put down a 20% loan. They, um, Take to put down 20%, take on an 80% loan by the house. We're also doing that a lot right now, as we talked about earlier, with the existing financing. We're just assuming loans, doing the full qualifying assume so we can easily get that two and a half to three and a half. Because I don't want to walk by, man. When I find those great loans, right, Scott, where they're letting it to go for a reasonable price, I don't want to lose it because I can only do sub two. I can right. only leave the loan in their name. Because if I do that in this market right now, because we don't have that tsunami of foreclosures, I'm leaving boatloads of deals on, on the table. And almost nobody is trying to buy properties and assume the loans. Everybody's trying to do the whole subject to and blah, blah. And they're like going, um, we're not broke. We're not in trouble. We have equity. I mean, we're willing to give up some of our equity and we're let, willing to let you assume the loan. But why would we do the other model? Because that model is only for a small percent. And I want to be able to buy from every house that's out there that makes sense to me. So we just bring the, we give you guys a whole new set of tools. So let's talk about a normal deal. This is a property we did on Indianola Avenue. Uh, we bought it for $260. Uh, we remarket for $399.9. We made a placement fee of 10 grand up front. That's from the capital investor. I get 10 grand up front on every deal I do. Our monthly cash flow, our net was 80, 87 a month. So we play our principal interest, taxes, and insurance, no HOA on this property. And our net is 80, 87 a month. And our back end's 139.9. So this is the spreadsheet that we use, by the way. And we, we're going to teach you verbatim. It's in the product. But if I hand you a printed out spreadsheet, first of all, it's in like eight or 10 font. God bless you guys when you're younger. People with money, older people can't read it. Confused mind always says no. Right, Scott? Yes, sir. That, that's the answer. So you can't give a spreadsheet. Plus, if you give a spreadsheet, no matter how thorough your spreadsheet is, Anybody reasonably can add or take something away and change your conversation from we're going to move forward to we need to think about. It. You created that with that spreadsheet. Don't use that spreadsheet. Don't. I, I raise money from institutions, from family offices, from hedge funds, from direct Wall Street, where you know there are 10, 20 plus million dollar placements. We use this for the spreadsheet. If we needed to give some, some information after we do that, we teach you how to do it at the event that's in the package. We provide that. So we draw a house. Um, and we don't, obviously, I'd be doing this drawing and thing. It was worth 320. We bought it for 260. We put 52,000 down, 20% down by the capital investor, $208,000 new loan signed for by the capital investor. Our PITI was 14 a month. Our taxes out here are a little lower than what a lot of people pay. Our rents are also lower than what a lot of people pay. We're the fifth biggest city in America, and we're not even the top 25 in rental income. Uh, yeah, our numbers are low. Uh, we do $52,000 down, $8,000 in closing costs. Most of the houses we're getting today are ready to go. Just nominal cleanup. Um, we kind of, that last era of flipping kind of made the rehabbers not so good because you remember what it was like, Scott. Yep. Yeah, it's a $300,000 house. It, it needs $60,000 worth of work and you can buy it for two ninety five. dollars yeah. <laughs> It's like the numbers just didn't work. Um, so we're into this for 62 grand. Our rent's 2295. This is our spreadsheet. 1408. We make 887 a month. 887 times 12 months is 10,644. That's our annual income first year cash on cash. And that's the lowest it'll be. It goes up every year after that. We get 8,000 from the new resident. So I'm into it for 54. We make 10,644. And this is what I love and why we mainly do single family home portfolio rather than commercial. We we have all the different asset classes within real estate, but everybody's like, oh, I want to get, you know, I want to, you know, uh, red house, you know, green houses to red hotel. All right, let me help out. It was a game and you're not buying hotels. It's not commercial property. It was a hotel and it was a game. And if you are going to do commercial properties, for God's sake, don't buy duplexes and fourplexes. I mean, there's no less desirable place that a human being could live than in one of those, especially Class C. We do regular houses, regular neighborhoods, good people, good neighborhoods. They stay for the long term. And I figured out decades ago, a good mom and dad aren't going to let their family stay in a bad neighborhood. So we don't buy in bad neighborhoods. They're just not worth it. So our first year. You know, and you got people in institutions, you know, fighting for three, four or five caps across the country, correct? Yep. This is a very mediocre deal. 20% cash on cash first year, plus all the other good stuff, depreciation, 
uh, the section 179 first year. We lots of our stuff we monetize, but this is just our first year cash and cash. And we will show you in April at our office deals just like this. We will show you over and over again how we do this. And there will literally be not a few people. There'll be like a quarter to a half of the room plus. We'll have 20 to several hundred of these deals doing the model for, for real. They're just to refine, tune, get recharged, re-motivated, and keep raising the bar and raising the bar. So if you want to come into a room where people are successful in doing it and are making money for real, come and see us. Um, and that's it. That, that, that's the spreadsheet. That's how we do it. The, the next thing is, you know, the, the last two talking points we do are the tax benefits. Tax benefits are great. We will go into a full breakdown. I'll do a couple hours on all the tax benefits, 179, 199A, 162C, the things that are really beneficial to us. But there's substantial tax benefits. The nice thing, everybody who's rich and has money, their accountant will agree. There's great tax benefits. Um, next thing is rate of return. This is where you guys need to be careful. Most of the time, the number we use in most markets is we say that the rate of return is four to six. But John, you just showed me 20. Yep. We overperform and underpromise. And I let me help you out. If you're out there trying to raise money right now and you're showing any number above 10%, it yeah. is too high. There yeah. is way too much volatility. There is so much fear. The market is just so massively infused with fear. And it has been, ladies and gentlemen, since 2008. See, this is just the 2008 to 10 hangover. That's all it is. That era, that generation, those great crashes happen every 60 to 90 years. Our last great crash, 2008, the one before that was 32. The one before that was 1870. The one before that was in the uh, 1790s. These are repeatable 60 to 90 year events with charts going back across Europe and, and other places 6,000 years. We don't have another one coming, but that generation then maybe they don't have one coming. That generation that had that money was so psychologically and emotionally harmed and damaged, most of them unaware of it, that they have never recovered and they never, ever will. That's why great crashes are 69 years apart. See, the people who had the money, who lost a big chunk of their money, they have to die. And usually their children have to die. I learned the lessons from my grandfather. He was born in 1898. It was very influential to me. To where in 87, I was like 32, 87. Wow, is this it? A lot of signs were there, but not quite. And so when the eight happened, I mean, I wasn't surprised at all because I knew we were right at the end of the window when these things happen. See, right now, most of the people who lost large portions of their fortunes but are still rich, they've never recovered from eight to 10 and they never will. If they passed on, their children were significantly and emotionally damaged by it, and they never recover. See, that's why there's so much money in cash. People are so afraid of losing who have it. This is not us. This is not people who are watching podcasts and YouTube boobs. But they're not the people with the money, are they? We're talking to the people with the money who work very, very hard owning a business or working at a job. And most of them work 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours of work because that those, those three generations that are lumped behind, that's what most people in those generations who became decamillionaires did. They worked very hard for a very long time and they were very good with their money. They're just locked in fear. And you get to open that up and serve them amazingly. You know, and you know, just if you've tried to get money, you know, ever had people love your deal? Your numbers, everything you had to say, yet they didn't give you the money. The reason was your deal was about the deal instead of what it needed to be about, which was meeting their emotional needs on a conscious and a subconscious level. And we're going to go deep dive in April and on the audio programs. We go deep dive into the psychology side. So you can really understand that, look, there's a reason why people that I've worked with you know, and myself, why we've made millions of dollars a year for real every year, year after year after year after year after year after year. It's not an accident. There's a skill set that's completely teachable. Part of it is science. Part of this is art. And we take what you're best at and strengthen that. And then the other will follow. Um, this is Nicole Hutmacher. She's in Austin, Texas. She did over 100, first year, over 100 Burley deals. And they made over a hundred over a million dollars in tax deductions to offset income from another business they own. Um, this is Andy Keel. A Andy's down in, um, in Tucson, Arizona. He does mainly... Owner financing subject to, he's going to be our expert panel. He'll be available for you to meet with privately and personally throughout all six days. Um, and he runs a Tucson Club Forest, uh, Burley subgroup down in uh, Tucson, Arizona. So six talking points, safety, security, long-term, cash flow, tax benefits, rate of return. The seventh, and you want to be soft on this, folks. 
is capital growth or appreciation. So I do a lot of work in the English Commonwealth. I have a lot of clients from there. They call appreciation capital growth. If I'm in Australia down under, they're afraid of losing money too. I talk about appreciation. When I'm in America, I talk capital growth. We know what the words mean, but capital growth doesn't have that fear-based connotation that appreciation does. I also I need, I need to be very soft with this. As the markets have shift and have gone down, people of wealth are looking this as risk, 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 risk. And that's what they're trying to avoid. If they weren't avoiding risk, they'd have almost no money in cash. I mean, normal portfolio would be 5 to 10% in cash. So it's not a podcast. People who are wealthy don't have 0% of their money in the cash. That's ludicrous, stupid, and insane. I know it's a popular thing on podcast and IG right now, but that's not the truth. It's not real. And I have the financial statements of close to 1,000 people worth, worth $10 million to a $1 billion. It's not how they do it. Five to 10% would be a normal. We're just seeing people today that some of it's like 60, 70, 80% is in cash and almost all of liquid money is in cash. That's what we're going to help place. Um, so it's a risk. We're not going to go with it. We're going to do it. We will also show you um, at the event, the first weekend, we will show you an apples to apples comparison against whatever they're making to the planner. And we will show you how to obliterate financial planner returns. Most of our properties actually are making 30 to 45% plus per year actual returns. And we'll show you in great detail exactly how we monetize that. We call it the Burley Matrix and we'll show it to you, take it home, use it. Uh, just don't leave with it on a presentation because it's too much. Um, and remember, as silly as it sounds, it's not about real estate. It's not about the deal. It's not about the money. It's not about the numbers. It's being the emotional needs and getting that real estate is entirely about money. Shift the focus from real estate, shift the focus to raising the capital, getting paid on the placement, and then the game works. Hey, I'm going to encourage you guys to go to uh, johnburley.com slash Scott Carson. Uh, we have an offer for you. It's a secret of raising private money. So it's johnburley.com slash Scott Carson. Yeah, and we'll just go through here. So we have, first of all, this is a very, very big package, far bigger than what you're used to seeing if you guys have seen packages. We do it on purpose. I, I think if you were to talk to my students and Scott, you know a lot of them, they, they would say the greatest thing about me is that, you know, I'm an active active, active participant in the market. I'm the founder yes. and CEO of a private equity company. And I really know what I'm doing because I'm active in the market. And then they would also say, that's the worst thing about me. Because of that, you know, I'm not on the road 40 weeks a year doing events. We don't do events all over the country. We don't do any of that. We're here in Phoenix. I do four events a year and that's all I do. And you need to come to me. So we really did a package that was beefed up on purpose because this is a real business. I mean, yeah, it's like I tell people, look, if, if you're looking for, you know, um, you know, six downloadable CDs and a 40 page ebook at, I'm not your guy. This is a real business with a real learning curve and real education. And yeah, you can start right away and start making money, but there's a lot of components to really run a successful business for the long term. It's not by accident. It doesn't come from an hour YouTube video. It's a lot of a lot of involved. So we give you 26 digital CDs on the secret of raising private money, volume one and volume two, and just go through exactly the process of how we raise money, how we analyze deals, how we look at deals, how we do the deals. Next thing we do is we do, we did an all new update on 3.0. We're using the numbers of today on raising private money. We provide that for you. We also give you overcoming objections. People are like, well, people are going to object, you know, and I always love events where they go, oh, well, people don't object to our offer. It's so good. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> I guarantee you people are going to have objections. In fact, I've been doing this 40 years. How about instead of instead of pretending there are no objections, let's embrace them. I will show you the six objections that you're going to get the most, the six objections that don't come up often, but some, and then six that are more esoteric. Because there's 18 objections you need not how to answer verbatim, word for word, and we show you exactly how to do it. So I live in the real world. And so you got to be prepared. So again, we're just giving you more and more tools. Next thing we do is private money contracts. These are the exact contracts that I use with my capital investors. We structure this intentionally and deliberately to not be a security. 98% of my students don't do it as a security. They do it as a business with a capital investor and a managing investor with them being a managing investors. These are docu documents have been around. They've been upgraded over the years, but in this format, they've been around for over 33 years. And we've dotted the I's, crossed the T's and provide them for you exactly how they work to make sure you're protected and your capital investors protected. 
Um, Dodd Frank solution. I know you're in the real world on this. A lot of people out there want to pretend, uh, especially in the South and the Midwest, they want to pretend that like all these federal rules and regs don't apply. <laughs> okay, we're teaching you how to build a real business. And there are real things you need to be aware of in Dodd Frank that apply on the owner financing side and the remarket. And so we cover it verbatim, show you exactly how to do it. And we even give you the pages that you need to put into your handbook. See, because you, you should have a handbook for your business. One of the biggest tests is what was the intention and then what's document written down. So we give you the documents to put it in your procedures and policy manual so you have it there for you. So if anything goes wrong, you're clearly structured. Um, contracts and documents. Look, I live in the real world. This isn't the seminar land. And, you know, and the stuff that they tossed in the 70s and 80s, it barely worked back then because most of the real estate education, unfortunately, it is literally based on what a few men did, it was men back then. And I knew them, um, you know, some of those founders of the education side. It was stuff that they did in the 50s and the 60s and 70s in small towns in the South and Middle America. And they were pretty much all the richest man in town. I mean, I'm, I met, saw a guy do it. I told you about, about this guy named Nick who had 1,400 houses. His, his idea of an eviction, his due process is he whistled a, a, a sheriff's car where they pulled over. He gave him each 20 bucks and he told him to go throw the people's stuff on the street. And they did. That's how it worked in 1950 in West Virginia. We live in the real world. And so you got to do this. So the point of this is when I'm working with a real estate agent, if I'm working with a real estate agent, I need to use his or her form. I need to use their state form. They're not taking the creative form. And look, seminar lands, they just pound this too much. You do not want to assign, you do not want to attach your, your 187 secret contingency clauses to keep you from losing money, you know, subject to approval of my partner, who's my cat. Look, they've been to seminars too. They know it's a crock. They know the proof of fund letters aren't real. I mean, they've been around. So when I'm dealing with an agent, I use their form. I put in what I need to protect myself, but I use their form because I got to follow their rules. When I'm not working with an agent, then I'm going to use my creative document. So when I'm remarking on owner financing, we use our docs. When I'm buying on owner financing without a realtor, we use our docs. And we show you how to do those. We give those to you and they're all set up to protect you. <clears throat> Next thing we have is how to buy and sell with, without the banks. And this is just how we do all the creative financing. They're subject to the owner financing mirror wrap. I will tell you one thing I do differently. I've been around a long time and I've done volumes that very few people in the industry have ever thought about doing, yet alone approach. I never, ever buy without the deed. And I always retain the deed when I resell on owner financing, which would let you know, those of you that connect those dots, mm -hmm. I don't acquire on lease options, lease purchases, or any of those techniques that are so popular. And the reason is things go wrong and I can't control the time factor and make performance happen in a timely manner. So I don't do them. I run a real business and I, you know, for decades, I've been working with real firms. If I was doing some of the hokey shoddy stuff that's taught out there, there's no way in the world those people would have given me 10, 20 plus million dollars at a crack placement. It's gotta be a real business. We're gonna teach you how to have a real business starting from day one. Really excited to be here with you guys. Next thing is how we do the owner financing. This is how we cash flow real estate. This is how we consistently get 20 to 25% above fair market rent by providing home ownership to them. See, because what we're providing is the American dream home ownership. If our resident wins, we win capital investor does. So it goes through that. We give you two tickets. We April 15th to 17th and April 21st to 23rd. So it's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. First three days is all about how you form your private equity company, your real estate investment company. The docs you need, the the yeah, you know, how you incorporate, where you incorporate it, why we do what we do, you know, why it's not just a Delaware, which is public companies, by the way, you shouldn't be there, or a Wyoming or Nevada, why you actually need the business presence in your state, and, and then making sure that your articles are proper, that everything's done right, all the I's are done, teach across, and then we just go deep dive on raising money, raising money. I bring an attorney in who's not selling anything, who spends a couple hours with you going over the entity and the tax side. Uh, we do a field trip to our office. Right now, we're in my office. This is my office. All those swords back there, people go, wow, you got a sword. Do you like them? Yep. And I used to do life steel competition where we armored up and went and beat on each other. People, did that hurt? <laughs> you damn right it hurt. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And we're going to go through the raising money side to where you get down stone cold. If you're coming to the event, we recommend you stay at the hotel. Again, there's going to be scores of people who are successful investors in the model already who have 10, 20, 40, 50, hundreds of burly houses, almost all staying at the hotel. So much happens before at breakfast, which is included, and happens after at night. The second night, 
uh, the first weekend, that Sunday, we do a cocktail party hosted by me. We have a movie that's an educational learning experience. And it's just three full-on days, raising money, raising money, raising money, raising money. And we go all day long. We then, you know, for the people that are a high-end program, they, they do uh, some field stuff. And then we have a, a mastermind. And then we're back in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, April 21st through 23rd. Because there's a lot to take in, guys. And we're going to really go into the real estate. Exactly how we place, what we place, why we place, how we place, how the mechanics work, how we get the 10,000 fees up front. Part of the fee was, it wasn't for any of you. I didn't design it for an event. I, I designed it so I could eat, pay my own bills and build my company. So because starting out, a lot of our people, yeah, I mean, we want to hear about the Trishas who do 200 deals in four years. But what I like to hear more about is the guy or gal who starts out who does four or does six their first year, but they made 40, 60,000 in placement fees. So now makes the leaving the job a reality while building up the cash flow, the sustainable income. So the placement fees, they give you eating money today. They help you pay for any past debt that you have, consumer debt that's not good. And then they're going to give you the money to build and grow your business. Without it, it's just so difficult. And it's just like, you know, Scott, you know, I've talked about this. Show me a business model, a real business, not a seminar land business, a real business where the owners don't get paid. It's like, it's ludicrous. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, when I would show my clients from the Wall Street side, what I was trying to do in real estate, I mean, they would just look at me like, wow, first of all, I'm questioning that we gave this guy our money. Is this how he runs his real business? It's like, oh, no, I don't do anything. And it's just like, well, if you don't run your real business, it's like, why would you run your other business like this? It doesn't make any sense, John. You should raise your money. Um, and so we're just going to teach you how to run it like a real business. So it really works and you really prosper. We're going to give you the appointment script so you can make it rain. Um, how to call a, a verbatim script you follow to set the appointments to go raise the money. And let me just help you out. If you're talking about real estate investing, you're screwed. You're just blowing all your potential leads out of the water. We'll show you exactly how to do it properly. Yep. So, I mean, the, the system is very comprehensive. We've got secret raising money, one and two, 3.0, overcoming objections, secrets of raising private money, documents, the tickets. Yeah, you know, we just go through. It's all there for you. It's 10970 You can go on the website, check it out, but you can go to johnbrilly.com, Scott Carson. And it's fourteen ninety seven. So you know, and that's your your action step. If you haven't gone there now, go there then, um, and do it. So johnbilly.com, Scott Carson, check everything out. Check out the event. You know, uh, just kind of a couple things here. Right now, there's more money in cash is sitting in IRA and retirement accounts than any time in history. Why not get your share? Money's just sitting there. More money is fleeing out of the stock market and seeking safety than any other time in history. And when it is down, that is when it is easy. That is now. And then now, well, banks aren't safe either. This is your dream, folks. This is your dream. This is literally for most of you. If you weren't in a position and you weren't in the business to take advantage of 9, 10, 11, and 12, I'm sorry you missed it. And statistically and actuarially and factually, it's 60 to 90 years before that's coming. We, we are not sitting on those times now at all. None of the dynamics line up. I, I don't care what some crazy old guy in a podcast is saying. It's not true. It's not what's happening. People are scared about the past. They're fearful of the future. They want safety and security. Why not meet the need? Cash is king and the ability to borrow is king. And you need it for the great deals. And our system gives you that money and you know it's going to be easier with money, right? So let's just, let's stop trying to do it the old fashioned seminar way, which is just a broken, broken model. Let's do it the real way. And, and I think, you know, as, as we get ready to finish up here, Scott, is, you know, why continue to do all the work and hope it works out and you get paid? Um, the Burley Secrets of Raising Private Money program, it's a sure thing. We get paid upfront every time. And I think that's what you guys want for yourselves and your family. It's proven decades. It works all types of properties all across the country. We have students who do this with mini storage. We have students who do this with hotels. We have students who do this with land. We have uh, students who do this with multi-units, apartments. We do all kinds of different real estate classes, which we'll talk about in the events. So, you know, just go do it. it it's uh, johnburley.com, Scott Carson. It's fourteen ninety seven. includes the six days and all the product. Um, awesome time with you, with you and your folks tonight, Scott. Yeah, John, definitely awesome, awesome stuff. Looking forward to this. Uh, I'm going to be coming out to see it, actually, for the heck of it. <laughs> Would love to have you out, my friend. Uh, I, I know a guy who might be able to get you in. <laughs> I think you do, right? Exactly. <laughs> but that's but that's the thing. You hit some nails on the head that I, I'm glad I'm not the only one saying that. Although I sometimes feel like I am. You know, we don't have this huge distressed rate 
you know, there's not this huge tsunami of foreclosures coming. We do have some distressed stuff. There's distress everywhere if you know where to look, but it's not like it was exactly 2010, 2015. You've got to know how to find the deals. And what I love too is the fact that we t- you talked about the fact that people, hey, they've got equity. If they're distressed, they're okay selling, but they don't, they're not going to give it away for free. It, we're we're just, man, and I've done, I've done, I've done thousands and thousands of properties. 480 of those were sub two transactions. So, I mean, I've done probably more than anybody in the real yep, world. Yep. And, and those weren't assignments. I mean, I bought them and I kept every single one of them and, and they're either still in portfolio or we moved somebody else in and, and years, year later, they cashed us out. We're just not in that era. See, this has got nothing to do. This, this is where it's got totally got nothing to do with eight. First of all, everybody, you know, most of these loans, I mean, they're amazing loans. They're two and a half to sub four. But the problem is if those people bought in 1920, even if where you're at, the market's gone sideways or go down a little bit, they're still sitting on 100, 150, 200,000 yeah. in equity. They're not walking away from those loans. In fact, one of the things that, you know, my son does a lot of our acquisitions for us uh, it is, it's funny when he's talking to the real estate agents, they don't understand. Well, I mean, this is going to take 60,000 down. I, I don't know if you'd want to put 60 down just to assume the two and a half percent loan. Cause they're not thinking like a homeowner. They're just, yeah. they're thinking like a homeowner buyer who's going to do an FHA loan. It's like, no, no, no. 60 grand, no big deal. The bank was going to probably charge us 80. We're fine with putting 60 grand down and assuming for the loan all day long. Yeah. And by the way, on assumables guys, that 10 loan number does not apply. Exactly. You can assume as many as you can sign for it. If you can't sign for them, you bring in capital investors who sign for them. Um, and so we're willing to, yeah, look, I'd prefer them no money down too, but I live in the real world. In the real world right now, most of those aren't happening. If they're happening, the interest rate's higher because they bought it in 22. And so now we're kissing those four and a half, five, five and a half loans, which are still a great loan, but I'd rather come in with a negotiated amount of capital, but some capital. Uh, for, first of all, these ones that are off MLS, we got to pay commissions. That's just what it is. I mean, I live in the real world. And and, and to me, I remember one thing when I first started, someone was like, going, okay, we, we only buy with no money down, no credit, and we never use a real estate agent. I never pay a commission. I'm sitting there going like, wouldn't that be like 95% of the deals you just eliminated from possibilities? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. It'd be like me being a stockbroker going, yeah, we don't do New York, New York Stock Exchange, no DASDAQ, not going to do the American in the old days. We're not going to do the Pacific either. Yeah, just penny stock. Like, well, I just threw away 90% of the deals because of stupid rules that sound cute on stage, but don't help you in the real world. So we're cool with buying them for very low or no money down. But I also live in the real world. If I want to buy lots of those low interest loans at a moderate price today, I need cash, the ability to sign for the loan to do it frequently, regularly, and consistently. And so I stopped trying to drink the green Kool-Aid. And years ago, I switched over to the red Kool-Aid. The red Kool-Aid was we do real estate with money and the ability to borrow. And if not yours, then someone else's. And even if you currently have the ability to borrow and have the money, you're going to deploy that capital and that borrowing ability, and then you need to bring more money in. Um, and so that's what we do. Um, yeah. it, it's a uh, yeah, great way to go. I encourage you guys, you know, go to johnbrilly.com, um, Scott Carson, um, and, and check it out. And, you know, we're just going to give you real content, real world and then I think most importantly um, is we're going to have the real success stories there for you to feel, touch, talk to as long as you want. We do each weekend, we do a, a Q&A panel with the, um, with the experts, uh, you know, our student grad Central Club members. And I'm also on site with you guys. And I remember clearly being new. And it was the same almost every time. <laughs> We've been to this seminar over and over again, Scott, you and I. Oh, it's a great question, kid. Yeah, write that down. I'll get to it at the end. And when the end comes, what do they do every time? Leave. They were never going to answer your questions. I remember the frustration of being new and having lots of deals in escrow. And everybody said they'd help. And I'd pay for the programs. And then no one could help. And then I remember the one where I really gave up. It was in 90. And I paid a bunch of money for this big national program, and this coaching thing. And the guy who was going to be my coach was in my small group at the event. They put him in the wrong group. The the guy was like bragging about how he was going to make 12 bucks an hour working at this call center. And he'd never done a real estate deal in his entire life. He was a nice guy, but he knew absolutely nothing. Because real world, people who make a half million dollars investing in real estate, does anybody really believe they sit in a phone room and answer calls? Because the answer is an emphatic no. I know that's what's said all the time, but it's, what, it's not what happens in the real world. 
Yeah, exactly. You can't have an employee teach an entrepreneur how to succeed. No, uh, you can't teach if somebody's reading out of a manual. Can't teach an investor how to close the deal. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and so what we do, we just bring the um, four times a year. The next one being in April, we just bring the real world um, here in Phoenix, totally open. Show you exactly what we do. Bring you to my bricks and mortar real estate company. People go all the time. Well, how come everybody else doesn't take us to bricks and mortar real estate company? Well, good question. Ask them because this is a bricks and mortar business, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a uh, e business. Real estate's not. You got real clients, real properties, real businesses, real stuff that has to happen. Yep. I have a question from somebody here on YouTube asking: um, Are your students primarily purchasing properties in one in one major market, or are they doing it in different markets? What do you find we, success? We have students. Great question. We have students doing it all over the country, actually all over the world. Back, matter of fact, in Sydney, Australia, there's one what we call a title company closing agent who's actually processed forty two thousand of our students' deals. So we have students doing it all over the country, and in most people, for most cases, I recommend you deploy close to home. I understand some of you are in markets that are cost prohibitive, where you need to push out a little bit to where regular people can afford. But look, there's no magic wand in the world and this whole seminar idea that, oh, my house is 2,000 miles away. What could go wrong? Let me help out everything. Um, it's easier to manage properties close by. Um, if your market really doesn't work close by, then look at other markets. But we, yeah, we're in several different marketplaces, but that's just because we expand and there's a limit. We've been large enough at times. There's a limit to how much you can put into a market safely and not move the prices adversely. So yeah, I, 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 it's not stock market. I can't buy, I can't put an order for a, a hundred John Burley houses um, in Phoenix tomorrow morning and just have it delivered without massively affecting the market. Exactly. Good stuff. Well, there you go, guys. Johnburley.com slash Scott Carson. Definitely get signed up for it. It is uh, just not only the, what he's giving you here, all the bonuses, the two different dates there for you guys. Take advantage of that. Uh, I, I got another question here from somebody. Uh, somebody asked, John, if I can't make one of those dates, can I attend at a later time? Absolutely. So we uh, we have a summer event and a fall event coming up. And if you can't make one of those weekends, we'll just substitute you in the, the next one. Now, each and every one of my different events is different. Yeah. I don't do the same event over and over again like most national companies because the reality is – three months, six months, nine months, you know, however down the road, the market shifts. So although the core content remains the same, we're continually adjusting and changing based on what's happening. It's why Dave Lowen is going to be at the event. Dave's been working with me for over 21 years and he keeps coming back. People are like, well, why would he come back over and over again? And it's my good friend, Eric would be like, do you listen to what you say? Like ever? I mean, the man's got hundreds of houses. If you had hundreds of houses and did millions of dollars in placement fees, wouldn't you be returning to the source on a regular basis to get <laughs> yeah. updated and recharged and go, go, go? I mean, one of the reasons and it's so cool for the student, you'll meet so many really successful people is they'll tell you repeatedly like, hey, after I attend John's events, I mean, literally in the next 90 days, I make one hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars minimum. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm here learning again, sharpening that sword, just getting better and better. So, yeah, you can come to a, a later event. Absolutely. We have people do it all the time. Good stuff there. Well, John, I know it's getting uh, later out there for you. Same here for those on the East Coast. Thank you so much for coming on Note Night American Delivery and just giving an amazing offering. Look forward to seeing you in Arizona. And for those of you guys that are getting signed up, definitely something you don't want to miss out because John's right. There's trillions of dollars sitting on the sideline. There's still amazing amount of deals out there. You don't have to have some needle in the haystack. John shares with you the best place to get stuff. And like he said, don't cut out 95% of the deal flow buy where the deal flow is, but just make sure you have the money and he'll show you how to raise the money. So Absolutely. Hey, Scott, thanks so much. I appreciate being here. Everybody that was in tonight and going to be watching the future, just thank you and God bless. You too, uh, enjoy looking forward to working with you guys. I'll see you soon, Scott. Take care, buddy. You too. Take care, John. All right, buddy. That's going to wrap it up for the night. Make sure you take advantage of the special offer there. JohnBurley.com slash Scott Carson. Uh, go out, take some action, everybody.